Welcome to my fine tip pen inventory. This includes felt tip pens, bullet tip pens, paint pens, gel pens, chalk pens, all of my white pens and my gold pens and my black pens. So it's like a big huge review as I decide which ones I'm keeping and which ones need a new home. This is part three of my brush pen inventory videos. I started with small brush pens and then did my large brush pens and now it's time for fine tip pens. Since I mostly use brush pens, I was surprised by how many fine tip pens I've accumulated over the years. Before we get into it, let's talk about this pen case I've been using. It was the perfect size for these pens and it's great storage option when you're moving, but it hasn't been the easiest for daily use. I rarely pull these out because it's kind of clunky to pull the whole thing on my desk and open it up and only use one set of pens. I have some clear pen cases left since I've decluttered my other brush pens, so I will be transferring to those. First, let's start with Marvi Colorin Fine Tip Pens. These are the exact same colors as the brush pens, just with a bullet tip. They're good, but in my opinion, there's nothing that special about them except for the fact that they are the same colors as the brush tip, and sometimes that's nice to have. So I'll be keeping the colors that I kept of the brush pens, but I'll be sending on the rest of the colors with the other brush pen colors that I got rid of. If you watched my other brush pen inventory videos, you've seen me go through all of my pens to find which ones I still love and which ones need a new life. I will be listing them in my Etsy shop with just the cost of shipping. I'll be telling my email newsletter subscribers the exact day and time that I'll list them so you can mark your calendars and everyone can have a fair chance. If you would like to try any of the pens that you see me decluttering, the best way to learn all the details is to be on my newsletter. You can sign up for the lettering library below to join us. Now let's look at the Stabilo Pen 68 bullet tip pens. Stabilo has the fine tip pens, you know, the ones that are orange, like the orange pen body. And those ones I feel like are really popular, but these ones are thicker with that bullet tip and they match the brush pens. Although some colors are the same, but I feel like there are more colors in the bullet tip, or maybe I just don't have all the brush pen colors. I'm not sure, but I don't use these. So I'm going to send them on with the brush pen colors that I'm also decluttering. These next ones are from American Crafts. I think I got them from Tuesday Morning or TJ Maxx. They just look so pretty and I love the diamond on the top of the lid. There's nothing special about how they write. They're just pretty and they're fun to write with. So I'll transfer them to a clear plastic case and see if that helps me use them more or maybe I'll be decluttering them in a few months. We'll see. Okay, next, have you tried the Papermate Flare? I feel like these ones are especially popular among teachers. I wanted these for a while and I finally got them a few years ago, but now I rarely use them. They're really smooth and they would work well for faux calligraphy. I'm gonna transfer them once again to my clear plastic pen case and wait a little while to see if I'll use them more. Okay, on to Jelly Roll gel pens. These are the Stardust colors and they are so much fun to use. They're really glittery and I've had a lot of fun coloring with them and also doing faux calligraphy. They're really inky and smooth. And just so you know, they do show up on black paper, but there isn't much distinction between the colors. So when the ink dries, they mostly just look like glitter on the black paper. And I'm okay with that. If that's the look you're going for, they're not going to be really vibrant on black paper. These next ones are the Tombow Twin Tone, and I have a crazy story to share with you. A few years ago, when Tombow Twin Tone were just barely coming out, it was really exciting and I thought, wow, Tombow is coming out with new pens. I had to try them and it felt like everyone had them, but I think back now and I really just saw influencers using them, which is fine. So I got them and then every few months they came out with new colors until they had the full 36 colors. And every time a new set came out, I had to get it to complete my set. I loved these pens. I used them all the time. I used them for watercolor. I used them for coloring. I used them for faux calligraphy. They were some of my favorites for a while. 
but then for some reason I stopped using them as much. Maybe I had too many colors. If you saw my large brush pen inventory video, you saw that I always make a smaller color palette that I love when I have too many colors. That's just the way that I'll actually use them. So maybe I needed that for the Tombow Twin Tone because I kept buying all the sets. <laughs> But here's where it gets interesting. I bought the Monami Live Color Pens just because I love Monami Plus Pen 3000 and I wanted to try more Monami brand pens. I really loved the Live Color Pens, so they sat in my little pen case on my desk and I used them all the time. Not always for lettering, just sometimes to write my to-do list or in my journal. Those were the ones that I would grab. I don't know why, but it never clicked in my brain that these are exactly the same as the Tombow Twin Tone. I only just realized it as I started doing this inventory and I swatched my Tombow Twin Tone and then I swatched the Monami Live Color on the next page so I could compare the colors. They both have 36. They both have the bullet tip and the fine tip. The colors are almost exactly the same. There are a few differences here and there, but overall, they're the same. I cannot believe I never realized this. So when I started this inventory, I thought I for sure would be keeping my Tombow Twin Tone because I loved them for so long. But now I see them side by side and I definitely don't need two types of pens that do the exact same thing in exactly the same colors. I've been using my Monami Live Color a lot, so I'm gonna keep those and I'm gonna send on my Tombow Twin Tone, feels crazy. I thought I could never get rid of them because they did so much for my creativity when I first got them. I have such good creative memories with them, but I haven't used them in so long and they're not doing anyone any good just to sit in my drawer. So I'm hoping that someone can enjoy them and give them a new life. Maybe someone else can make new creative memories with them. And this is why it's so important to do an inventory of your pens or crafting supplies. I feel like I don't see a lot of people talking about this aspect. We see a lot of how people are organizing their pens and they're getting huge storage shelves to keep all of their pens. And that's important too. There's definitely a place for that. But what about when the amount of pens you have feels really overwhelming? Maybe one of the reasons it feels hard to create is because there are too many options. But if we'd clear out the clutter, it would open up space to feel creative again. And it would give us space to explore our lettering with just one type of pen. Actually giving ourselves limits helps us to explore our creativity. So I'm glad you're watching my inventory. If you want to do your own, I highly recommend it. And this is my box of chalk pens. I used to have so many different chalk pens and now I only have these because I rarely use chalk pens. And these ones were my favorite. They're the Casa chalk markers in pastel. I really love these colors. I'm not even gonna swatch them in my journal. I know I love them and I'm gonna keep them. These are the only chalk pens that I need. And I have the white in the Marvi Bistro chalk marker. This one was my favorite white one. And then I also have a gold one in the Marvi Bistro as well. And that is just right for me. And here are all of my acrylograph pens from Archer and Olive. I've collected a few sets over the years and I, use them a lot when I first get the new color set and then it kind of tapers off and I don't really use them as much. Oh, this is a Postilla. This is from Daiso and it's just a big black one and I love it. <laughs> Daiso is great for something simple like that. So I have the metallic set and I have the primary set and the tropical set and then a few other random colors. And they're acrylic paint pens. I'm not going to swatch all of them. I found that I mostly love using white and black. And so I found these acrylic pens on Amazon. The brand is Flycy, and it's just three white and three black. And I have been using the black one and the white one for several months and it's still going strong, doing well, and it was so cheap. So I would actually recommend getting these if you just wanna try acrylic paint pens instead of the cost of acrylograph to just try out at first. And these are all the rest of my white pens and we're gonna go through each of them. So first the Fly C, like I talked about, this one is my favorite white paint pen. It has that fine tip. I use it for doing little details and stars. It's kind of like using a gel pen, but it's with acrylic paint. 
Next, I have the Posca paint pen in 0.7 millimeters. And honestly, I have not noticed this one being worth the cost for me personally. Maybe other people love all of the Posca paint pens, but I actually like the cheap off brand better. Next for gel pens, I have the Uniball Signo in white, and this one is my favorite white one. Although I have to say that when it, the ink gets down, it's like halfway down, it kind of just stops working and it's not smooth anymore, even though half the barrel is filled with ink. So just know if you are going to get it, they work really well, but they don't last long. Next, I have my Jelly Roll gel pens in white. I have two different sizes and I've noticed that the bigger size, number 10, is better than the 08. It's just a little more opaque. So comparing them right here, it looks like the Uniball and the Jelly Roll 10 are pretty similar. I think I probably use my Fly C paint pen more than the gel pens. But of all the white gel pens that I've ever tried, these ones are my favorite. Next, I have a lot of black pens. I have been trying them over the years and this is what I'm down to. I'm sure that I'm gonna get rid of some of these. So first is the Kuretake Zig Rider. I can't even remember why I got this one, but it is probably my favorite. It has the bullet tip on one side and the fine tip on the other side and it's waterproof, which is really helpful. I'm pretty sure most of these black pens that I have left are waterproof. So this one is the Fly C paint pen and it's not waterproof, it's paint. It would run like acrylic, but it's really smooth. It has a nice little bit thicker line. And next is my Faber-Castell. This one is really good. It's also waterproof. And then next I have my Microns, my Sakura Microns. I have it in the 08 and the 05. And I do like having the different sizes. They are both waterproof and they work really well. Next is my Jelly Roll 08. This one is not waterproof. I do like how smooth it is, so I will keep using it. Next is the Pilot Super. I don't know why I have this one and it is waterproof, but I don't really use it in my lettering. So I'm going to actually just take this one and put it in my purse for when I need a pen when I'm on the go. And then the these next two are the Sakura Pigma Professional. I think that's what they're called. They look the same as the Pigma that has the brush pens, but I have the fine tip and the bullet tip and they're good. They are waterproof, but I do use my Kuretake Rider much more than these. So when you're looking for black pens, I would recommend definitely looking for something waterproof because it's nice to use with watercolor, but there's a lot of really good pens depending on the thickness that you want and if you want it waterproof. Finally, I saved the best for last. These are my gold pens. I love gold pens. I have another video where I reviewed all of the gold pens. I had so many and I'm down to these three because these are my three favorites. I don't need any other ones. I will replace these ones as soon as they run out. This is all I need. So first in the gel pen, I have my Uniball Signo. It's the gel impact in gold. And I really, really like this one. It's the best gold pen that I found. It is a little bit more yellow of a gold, but sometimes you just need a gold gel pen. I use it for stars and details in my lettering all the time. And next is my Marvi Deco Color. This one is more like a paint pen. And so you push the nib to get the ink to start coming out. And I love the gold of this. It is so shiny. It's not too yellow. It's the perfect gold. I also have the extra fine tip and I use the bold tip more than the fine tip, but I was just trying out the extra fine tip. The main thing about these is that they are oil-based and so they're going to bleed through most paper, even thicker paper like Archer and Olive journals. They bleed through that paper so I can't use them very often there. There's even some ghosting on watercolor paper. Typically with watercolor paper, you're not using the backside so it's not as big of a deal. However, I did try them on my black Archer and Olive journal 
and it worked great. So once I start using that journal more, I'm going to use these pens a lot more in my journal. So now it's nice to see all of my pens that I have all in one place. I hope this helped you find some pens that you might want to get or not get. Thank you for joining me for my inventories. The next one is probably going to be metallic pens. And I will leave the brush pen inventory playlist right here if you want to see the other ones that I've done. I'll see you there.